and welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. Got another great show in store for you, and welcome my guest, Catherine Arnoldi. Thank you for joining us on Let Them Talk. Thank you. I'm grateful to be here. Right. We met at uh, Blue Stockings, uh -huh. the uh, wonderful feminist-oriented bookstore, uh -huh. and many other types of books as well, on Allen Street and Lower East Side, mm -hmm. and uh, we were at a at a, a meeting of people who were talking about things, and um, you were talking about your interest in uh, uh, young mothers, people who were in their teen years and for one reason or another wind up with a kid mm -hmm. and then are have to face raising a child alone under those very stressful conditions. And of course, you're an expert on it, having done it yourself. <laughs> but even more importantly, and I'm gonna borrow your book here just to show people, you're the author of a book, but not just any kind of book, called, um, let me get the whole, The Amazing True Story of a Teenage Single Mom. Uh, here it is, and uh, <laughs> it's not just any book, it's a illustrated book. A graphic novel. Graphic novel, okay, yes. I'll call it graphic <laughs> novel, good idea, graphic novel. And um, we're gonna talk a lot about how you can't, the story behind this book, and it's a fascinating story which I've read, and it's a quick read, and uh, actually, it's an award-winning book. It's a book that's, got, that's gotten you actually quite a lot of notoriety, <laughs> and it's been out there. It's one of the best-selling books of its genre, I think. Uh, um, well, it's the only book of its genre, so uh -huh. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> if it's, yeah right. the, it's I mean, of of the genre, it's the uh, it's the only graphic. Well, I don't I don't know this for sure. I'd have to do some research, but I think it's the only book about that it tells the struggle of my struggle to go to college as a teen mom. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the only book graphic novel about a teenage mother struggling to go to college. That's true, right. but best-selling graphic novel? No way. <laughs> um, it's a book for teenage mothers, so no. It's, uh, it did win American Library Association Awards, so all the libraries bought it, mm -hmm. um, which has been great um, You know, to, to have, w when it came out in 1998, the first mm -hmm. time, sure. um, all the libraries bought it, and so I would hear from people that found it in the library. Really? And I think, I, I don't know if I told, said this before, but at the, um, the my highest compliment was a, a teenage mother emailed me and said the book saved their life, um, it changed their life, and could they take uh, an image from it and use it for a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Like, That's the best compliment ever. Right. Well, <laughs> it is a great book. Well, how did, when did you actually, you, well, I'm not sure where to start at the end and move towards the beginning. It started at the <laughs> beginning and move towards the end. But maybe we should give you some background. You you grew up, you were... Good writers old? start in the middle. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then both directions at the same time. Right. 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 And, um, but uh, let's just to, to set the place and, and ta tenor, um, you, you grew up in Ohio, mm -hmm. right, a Midwestern state, right, and uh, um, did not find much support when you ended up pregnant. Mm-hmm. And from your book, I mean, that's the impression. You, you got really very, no support from your family, no support from your community, no support from your school. They pretty much dumped you on the road. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Does this happen a lot today, even to this? Uh, sure, yeah, even interesting. Um, I don't know if there's been See, a study. Both directions a study, on. yeah, if, if there's a study done, but um, when a, t a, a woman is a teenage mother, if she has a, uh, a child who is a girl, she's more likely to be thrown out of the family than if she has a child who's a boy. Still, even in the United States. And, uh, and this is the, the, the Jeff Sessions morality that we're gonna be seeing. I don't, I don't know what we're gonna be seeing, but t uh, teenage mothers, uh, when I published this book in 98, did not have equal access to education. And that's what I was upset about. That's my area mm -hmm. of um, what I what I'm work for. So. Um, uh, I would go to homeless shelters and teenage mothers would say, oh, they told me to leave because uh, when I got pregnant, they told me to leave because the elevator wasn't working or they told me to leave because they don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. and this or would be the school. The school would tell them that. The high school. or The, the high school. Yeah. I'm talking high school. So, um, so and then uh, I see them in the homeless shelter. So I guess you know, we, know, mm -hmm. we know what the story ended up right. being. So... Um, Actually, um, so the story of how um, uh, I, I went to a homeless shelter in um, Boston, uh, invited by the Alliance for Young Families, which is a great organization in Massachusetts. And um, I went to a homeless shelter there. While I was there, I saw a woman with two children mm -hmm. in the homeless shelter. And she raised her hand and she said, oh, 
if I'm hearing you right, um, uh, when I, I was, I got pregnant when I was at Boston University and I was living in the dorm and they asked me to leave. If I'm hearing you right, that was illegal for them to ask me to leave? And I said, yes, of course. Title IX guarantees gender equity. Um, so, you know, well, anyway, so what, whatever happened to her, there she is in the homeless shelter. Um, those are the kind of tragedies that upset me very, very much. So. Um, while I was there, they took me to, there happened to be a Title IX mm -hmm. uh, conference, and Victoria Alsbretti uh, was running this Title IX conference, and I, I went and I realized, well, it, there's nothing in Title IX, I read Title IX, there's nothing in it about sports. But when you think of Title IX, gender equity in education, you think it's about buying a bas you know, one basketball. It's you have quad. A, 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 yeah, you have to spend the same amount of money right. on women's sports right. as you have to do in boys' sports right. when you're in high school. Right. So it's quantitative, right? One basketball, one basketball. Sure. But um, I thought, well, why can't this be applied to teenage mothers? They can't. Mm -hmm. They can't deny an education to teenage mothers. So when I came back, Donna Lieberman was um, doing a, a reproductive rights book at American or at uh, New York Civil Liberties Union. She asked me to come and help with it. And while I was there, I told her, I said, I'm seeing teenage mothers who are being coerced to leave high school. I think it's a violation of Title IX. And, and she's that's like, here in New York City. Was that here in New York City? Yeah, so? yeah, yeah. And she said, she says, you're exactly right. Let's do a class action lawsuit, mm -hmm. just like that. I'm like, you know, I felt like I was just, you know, a person who happened to be at New York Civil Liberties Union, and I suggested something, and suddenly everybody, oh, you know, yeah, let's do it. Right. Let's do it. Great idea. So mm -hmm. I made that little card. Oh, right. Here's the card <laughs> right here, right? Show, you can show folks the card. Here it is. We and made a card to... Um, to to get the people for the class action lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But really, the way that they... Um, it says here, if you are pregnant or a teen parent, you have a right to stay in school. There you go. There's something you learned today for folks who are out there who might find... Of course. You know, right now, you know, this is New York City and you might be in high school and we have young people watch the show and yeah. maybe you could have a friend they could tell us about. Right. So, um, the interns at New York Civil Liberties Union pretended they were teenage mothers they called 28 high schools. This was back in 2000, so it was a while ago. They called 28 high schools, and only six would let them in. Really? Even though they're required to? This was back in 2000. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they, had, they had the chancellor under their thumb. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had the goods. Um, it was, the problem was the person answering the phone had no, ch you know, just said, oh, I think you should just go get a G. They would give him their personal opinion, maybe. Right. Y you know, oh, I think you should just go get a GED. Now, aren't there high schools in New York City that specialize? You know, I've taught in high schools in New York City and in junior high schools, yeah. and I thought there was a high school they sent pregnant women to. It's separate but not equal. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've, you hear of teenage mothers being in honors and then suddenly having to go a place like that where the only thing is offered is earth science or something. Mm -hmm. So... Um, They've done away with that. They realized it was sure. not cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, So now you can stay in the school you're in, and they have to accommodate you in that school. Um, they have to let you go to the high school that, you know, you want to go to, right. yeah. Um, so um, actually, there are child care. You probably think there's plenty of child care in New York City high schools. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, 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 you know that there's a program, and some yeah. high schools have sure. child care. Yes. Um, so actually, I made another uh, cartoon once that said, uh, this was back in those days, mm -hmm. that said um, there's 11,000 new teen moms in New York City every year, mm -hmm. and there's 700 slots in the LIFE program. Mm -hmm. Oh. So in the high school. Okay. 700 slots for the child care program. Mm -hmm. um, 900, 700, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, Needless to say, what happens to the There's other... There's over one million students in New York City, you have to realize. But one million students go to high school or go to school at, at some yeah. level. High school, I don't know the percentage. A right. large percentage of that are high school students. Yeah. Hundreds so, of thousands. Right. But these are 11,000 teen moms, who, right. um, 10,000 of who aren't in the LIFE program. Right. Right. And in the old days, before welfare reform, uh, no thank you. Um, the Clintons. Yes. Um, uh, 
you know, a teen mother might have her grandmother at home taking care of the, or, mm -hmm. you know, a family member taking care of the children, but then they were called to work. Mm -hmm. So oh, that really, had to that, work. that devastated. And so that's interesting. So that the whole idea of working, work to welfare would take a child care provider out of the home, a grandmother or a mother who was helping. Right. So there's been a lot of, you know, that was a bad time. The, uh, Did the, they replace that with uh, child care that was supposed to replace the, or was it, do they even, in your opinion or in your knowledge, even recognize the damage they were doing? So I think it was last year, well, Jane Adams High School in the Bronx is now closed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was last year, <clears throat> about a year and a half ago, I was at um, Jane Adams High School in the Bronx mm -hmm. and at their life program talking to some teenage mothers. And I think some person from the, that was in the administration of the LIFE program, mm -hmm. I told this mm -hmm. person that statistic, sure. that there's 11,000 teen moms, there's only 900 slots. I said, is that still true? And he said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Uh, in that case, the other 10,000 mothers just, they're doing something, where nobody knows what it is they're doing. They're doing whatever they do. Yeah. It's their own. and. Uh, that you have to just be able to figure out the answer to your own problem and maybe turn over the child to a grandmother who's not drawn forth to work, for example. Yeah. I see. So Maybe uh, you go to a GED program. There's GED programs in neighborhood centers, you know. Instead um, of going to high school. Yeah. Um, you know, um, is that as good? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. But. Um, it's not. Yeah. It's good. Everybody knows GED is just. Uh, yeah. If you're not really academic. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's that's part of uh, part of what's why I wrote the book mm -hmm. to in you know encourage teen moms and, to fight for their equal rights to education. Can you go <laughs> working? You get the, you can get this book at at Blue Stockings, for example. Yeah, right? now it's one a of, Blue Stocking. One of my favorite <laughs> bookstores, and right. I don't mind giving them a little plug. And uh, ask sure your library to order it. Right, get it out of the <laughs> library. Every library should have this in New York City, right? Uh, they don't now. Oh, they so should. So hopefully they'll be ordering it soon. Okay. It just came out recently, again in paperback. Color. They had it, uh, every library had this version in the hardback. Oh, the hardback. But Let me take a look at the hardback. It's Beautiful. I didn't even see this. I saw, I read the version <laughs> you gave me. It's a heck of a story. Um, we won't go into all the details. It's a sad story, but. Uh, uh, how old were you when your daughter, when you became pregnant? I was a teenager and very young. You were very yeah, young. Yes, and um, uh, um, I was on my own, and I started working in a factory, and I worked in a factory for four years, rubber glove factory. Making rubber gloves. Making rubber gloves in Canton, Ohio. And making sure there wasn't a pinhole in the rubber gloves because right, that right. saved lives. So you became an right. expert at rubber gloves. I guess so. But the factory, I could tell you a lot about them. <laughs> you know a lot about rubber gloves. <laughs> yeah. And you know, for example, that they use toxic chemicals in the manufacture. Exactly. The coagulant is very toxic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as soon as you started organizing, telling people about it, you had um, a great moment when you were when you were eventually fired, and you. Uh, walked out of the factory announcing to everybody along, uh, on the way that uh, the coagulant <laughs> will make you blind. Well, I don't know if I actually... That's, uh, I, reminds me yeah. of that movie. Uh, uh, well, you know, I might have been thinking of that movie. I don't know. They had just a, come out at the time. Yeah, like they had, Ray, a, right, I think they like. had a policeman walk me to my car. When and I you was asked fired. them, why, why are you having a police and walking to my car from a factory? I'm just a cartoon character, right? right. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> what are you so afraid of? I'm just a ca cartoon character. I can't imagine I was so young. Um, right, so you had that courage, that youth had, uh, youthful courage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You decided to have that your Stupidity, baby. maybe. <laughs> you, you, well, that's all right. That's what it takes sometimes. <laughs> so uh, you decided to have the baby. Did, was that your decision? Um, no, it wasn't a decision. This was before Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. So you had no choice? No way. choice. Not in Ohio? No, not in Ohio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what we would go back to, mm -hmm. right, if these mm -hmm. folks had their way, right? Uh, yes, I'm, pr I'm pro-choice. And, um, you know, it's not my area. Mm -hmm, right. um, it, but it is an interesting side. Yeah, but I am, I am pro choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because um, the, what you had, to, I, I'm so glad you had your daughter and she grew up and is now a, an adult herself. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, the, the horrors you had to go through at such a young age, no one should have to go through. Speaking of refugees, mm. it was almost as if you were a refugee. I don't, I don't want to, uh, no, right. I, I, I don't want to go there. I'm not yeah. going there. But, um, 
Yeah, it's it's very hard, and I have I teach now at Bronx Community College. Right. I I'm, do the adjunct shuffle, sure. so I teach, and a lot of my students are teenage mothers, and um, they go through similar painful experiences. It's very difficult for them to stay in school. Mm -hmm. Very difficult, and uh, they're just heroes that are fighting the most um, difficult mm -hmm. of um, obstacles, mm -hmm. and and um, to they are over overcoming amazing obstacles to stay in school every day. Now, when you arrived in Colorado, finally, you did get some help, and there was sort of a network, and, and, and that was, can you tell me a little bit about what it was that helped you in the end, you know, after this period of time when you were, you know, I won't go into all the details, read the book, but uh, you were hitchhiking <laughs> around the country, back and forth across the country with no place to go with a baby at a, at a teenage years, which is, to me, incredible, and that you pulled it off was amazing, and you eventually wind up in a very cool town, you're lucky, Denver, Colorado, mm. It was and, cool then. Yeah, right. That's for sure. Yeah, how did that? What happened? Uh, let, let's go past all the painful parts that people can read about in the book. We ex we suggest you do that, um, and uh, and tell us how, how you were able to get the support that you. Uh, well, I was the positive side of the. Story. I was walking back from uh, taking my daughter to the park, and um, I had a friend there, so my friend was yeah. helping me get on my feet, and I was walking back and. There was a toy that the kids played for with, mm -hmm. a, like a big toy, actually, I think it was called. And, of course, my daughter made a beeline for it and wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, take a turn on the toy. And so I stood there and started talking to the mother who was sitting on the steps. And she said, what do you do? And I said, well, I work at the Magic Pan restaurant as a waitress. Mm -hmm. Good job. And, um, but I, I don't know what prompted me to say this. I have no idea, but I said, but I'm going to go to college someday. And she said, oh, I got a Metro. Mm -hmm. I said, what's Metro? She said, Metropolitan State College. Mm -hmm. She said, they have good financial aid. I said, what's financial aid? So she, Jackie Ward was her name, and she took me under her wing and was a, such a beautiful person. I'm so grateful for her kindness, for her generosity. I don't know if I would have filled out the application. Mm -hmm. I, I just probably didn't feel worthy. I mean, I don't know why I blurted out that bravado to her, but I did. And um, she helped me fill out the applications. The financial aid applications are very were very confusing. I don't. I'm sure they still are. The um, she helped me fill out the college application. Um, she helped me find the child care center uh, where her children were going that was free thanks to the great um, councilwoman in, um, in, uh, in, Denver. in Denver, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so she basically set it all up for me. And um, she, she, w uh, she continued her um, working her whole life mm -hmm. helping, helping other mothers. Did you have your high school diploma? You, you must have had yeah. it. So yeah. you were able to get through high yeah. school. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had um, finished early, so. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, um, the thing that she helped me with was just feeling like, well, actually, um, she sold it to me as a scam. She said, every quarter you go to school, they'll give you a check for $600. And so that was... She, you know, she knew that I didn't feel worthy, but she knew that I needed money. A good deal of money in the 1970s. That's right. And so, um, and so, of course, I signed up. Mm -hmm. But then once I got in there and went, you know, realized everything, all the possibility mm -hmm. that was there in front of me. I mean, people asking me my opinion about... Mm -hmm. oh. So education, you think, is the best uh, answer to a, a, a young woman who's... Uh, been left high and dry with a baby and nobody to help and nobody to support and, and hostile family and hostile uh, society surrounding them. Uh, as that one Spanish truck driver said, it's a dangerous world right out there. Mm -hmm. Education is the way out, mm -hmm. in your opinion. It seems to be. I mean, that's what you talk about the most, right? Well, it's certainly, um, I just, I'm, it changed my life from being battered by boyfriends, working in factories, bells telling me when I could go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. and suddenly somebody asking him, you know, suddenly I just saw, I saw, I saw that this might be something. This mm -hmm. might be, this was something. Right. Yeah. 
So we, we, were, we were talking, uh, going back to the, the situation here in New York City for, uh, for mothers, you were talking more, I'd like to know more about what's, what's the situation today, if you know it, and, and what people can do. How can they, how should people who are uh, as concerned about this subject, you know, thousands and thousands, 10,000 girls mm -hmm. in the city are affected by this, you know, that's a lot of people and their babies. 10,000 at least. Babies. I don't know if it's still 10,000, but the, the person at Life said it was. I haven't done the research right, right. To, to see it, but it's, 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 a, it's a high number. Yes, yeah, it's thousands. Um, yeah, and the highest percentage is in the Bronx, mm -hmm. um, where, I'm, where I'm teaching, right. and I'm happy to, I'm so happy to and be right. there. And, and certain cultures and families, even, well, you know, they don't really, you know, you have to have the baby. You get pregnant, you just have to have the baby, whatever is available. Yeah, I, I don't, I, that's not my area, but, mm -hmm. um, but, I, I, you know, let's help, let's protect financial aid. Let's make sure there's financial, those two words that change my life, mm -hmm. that they're well, there for other free people. college education in New York City. What and we're going to have it again. Right. This That's is, what no, is a Cuomo why, says that. Yeah, why free <laughs> education is important. Wouldn't that be great if, right. if CUNY does that? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like, well, California has free education, but then they have fees and they have, you know, it's, yeah, yeah there's always well, they something. They the fees. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's there's always, always something like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Something. But uh, we also have, and I, th I think it's that we have in New York City, I believe, free ca daycare now, right? Or, or, or preschool, right? Not daycare, but preschool. Yeah, yeah. If you can get into it. Yeah. If that, you, you know, that's I don't know what the percentages are and how that is. It's just a, 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 how many are, are involved in that. Yeah. But are these the kind of things that you think are, are should be done? Of course. Child care, um, you know, give a scholarship to um, mm -hmm. your local college and mm -hmm. uh, for it, specify it for a teenage mother who's mm -hmm. going there. Right. <laughs> so you became a. St you were able to get your life on course. I mean, you went to school, and then you, you transferred to another four-year school, a land grant college, a great land grant college system of America. Yeah. I went to Wisconsin. You went to Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. Great schools. <laughs> Fayetteville, right? I yeah. Love Fayetteville's a great town. I it was time. a great town. Yeah. It isn't anymore. <laughs> of course. Oh no, it was then. It was you then. Know. I think yeah, it still I'm is. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, there is great town, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Yes, it is. It's not what people think of Arkansas. It's very mm -hmm. cool. And uh, places like Madison, Wisconsin, or Iowa City, and yeah. you know these are places where these are states that ha were far seeing at least one p at one point in their history. You're bringing up something uh, you know which I didn't even think of uh, to talk about, but it is a big issue, which is the land grant colleges, the city colleges, and and state mm -hmm. colleges are a place, a great place for teen mothers to go. And teen mothers are very susceptible to these online. Uh, colleges. Oh, I'm glad you're bringing that up. Yes, I read so that. That is book. a huge yes. scam. It's the a scam terrible colleges. The horrible scam colleges. Where they pay Trump a, University. Uh, well, for example, but even yes. Phoenix University, I think the Which tuition is advertises a lot, and it advertises on youth-oriented programs. Yes, and, and it's twenty thousand, I think, in in oh. tuition, and which of course and, nobody can pay. And you've got, and you've got nothing. But um, I saw it. I saw in um, a town. Um, in Pennsylvania, I forget what the town was. It was in mid Pennsylvania somewhere, not a big town, mm. not Lehigh, but I was in this town mm -hmm. at this homeless shelter. Yes. And this woman there said, oh yeah, I have $20,000 in loans from some college called something, uh, and I didn't even know I was signing loan. You know, they, when you sign the papers, they take your Pell Grant they take your SEOG money, they take all your money mm -hmm. that they can get, and then they make loan money. And she didn't even understand it. And you make a, so you always point to the forms you had to fill in your story, and always say, not in English, or. <laughs> There's that too. <laughs> the right, There's that it's too. It's hard to read, yeah. especially if you, it's before you've gone to college, and right. you want to go to college, right. and they're facing you with like, impossible to read. It's okay. not like this, that's very easy and quick to read, and tells you the story <laughs> so clearly it's, it's, in a short number of words right. you know, that nobody can avoid. So uh, let's talk a few minutes. We've got a couple minutes left, um, and uh, Catherine Arnaldi. And I wanted to ask you, uh, you gave me this. This is, what's this about? Michael well, Carter's about, yeah. Red Tape. Uh, uh, it was, it's a great inspiration for me because, you know, I moved to New York in 86, mm -hmm. and I started living at we the lived this, yeah, we lived in the same neighborhood, Rap so Arts Center. Yes, right. My first day in New York, I met, uh -huh. um, I met uh, Steve Cannon uh -huh. at Tribes. Sure. And um, so all of the, card, you know, it was like I, my mm -hmm. undergraduate degree was in art. I was uh, working on mm -hmm. a graduate degree in creative writing. My good writing. friend, Terry Taylor. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic. Um, so... Um, 
so I put together my undergraduate degree in art, my graduate mm -hmm. degree in creative writing, yeah. my increasing awareness of that uh, there were all these cartoonists around, mm -hmm. and I draw. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, I, you know, uh, just all the inspiration. Also, the increasing awareness of the political significance of my mm -hmm. situation, my, my past. Right, Lower East Side's great, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, what, what so many people inspired me yes. there, and. Um, so I went to Especially city. In that period. Yeah, yeah, went to city college. I was I did the Neuroreken Poetry Slam. Reggie okay. Gaines beat me by a s quarter of a point. Ah, uh, you're a poet as well. Grand Slam. Well, I just read my, you know, read my work. Your work, right? Which yeah. is a great story. People, uh, <laughs> you said people, you've been on a lot of play. Uh, just go. Where, where have you talked about this? I mean, besides my little show here on MNN. Well, when it came out in '98, I was on the Today Show and yeah. Nightly News. And what was the general reaction when this came out in the last minute? To your to your book, I mean, I would imagine some people might have said you're promoting child uh, teen motherhood or something like that. Did you get a positive or did you get any negative reaction? I feel like everybody wanted to give me a chance to say teenage mothers don't have equal access to education. Really, and that they um, the media wanted to get that across. That, so that's yeah. positive. That was, yeah, that's a positive I, I felt story. that. Yeah, you got a positive experience when it came yeah, out. Yeah, I felt that. Yeah, you didn't get like talked about on the Christian Broadcasting Network or something like that? Well, if I, they did, I didn't know about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you got your message now. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have a minute to go. Uh, anything you'd like to tell us? Well, um, besides stay away from Phoenix University and these other places. Oh, I also have a collection of short stories that I published. Oh, really? What are they about? What are the stories? I won the Juniper Prize. Oh, they're completely okay. unreadable experimental uh, fiction because I studied with Gordon Lish. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, I could show that when I started, I just Xeroxed it myself. Some oh, really? Right, that's great to show. This is how it was how it was available, like a zine, basically. Yeah, right? it was a zine. It started as a zine for oh, many right. years. Great. And it was in the Bad Girls Show at the New Museum. This oh, was sorry. the this yeah. was the issue at the New Museum. So you've been in museums. I, I this book has it's been so in famous. the New Museum. Yeah. Excellent. Well. Thank you so much, Catherine Alaldi, <laughs> for telling Thank us all this. And, and you, you came out that. pretty well from hitchhiking across the country <laughs> with a baby to an accomplished writer living in the Bronx. Thank you for joining <laughs> Thank us. Thank you. And for the work you've done. Very Pre important. Appreciate your time.